How's it going, people? Welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here and you get value from this video, hit subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Before I get started, two housekeeping items. Number one, if you haven't already joined the Facebook group, the link and my contact are in the box below. Number two, I've been gone a while. I've been deployed overseas and like the very stable genius that I am, I caught COVID. Totally my fault. Now that we got all that out of the way, in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about the PSA VBT. I'm going to teach you all the things I did to prepare for the test. I'm going to teach you how to read an x-ray image. Everything I'm going to teach you are things I figured out on my own before going to take the CBT. This was in 2009 when I took the test. The only thing I had to go by was Google. And Google did a pretty decent job getting me prepared. However, today you've got Fossil. What is the CBT? Test to determine your hiring eligibility. CBT has two parts. English language test, all they're trying to see is can you read and write English and the x-ray test. At the end of the test, you don't get a score. You just find out if you pass or don't. The exam is pass fail. However, for all of you high achievers out there who really want to score on that test, you only have to have a 70% to pass a federal employment test. If you passed, you at least got a 70%. On the English language test, there's two parts on it. Part one, you read a paragraph and then you answer questions on that paragraph. Part two, sentence structure. You get a sentence and then you get answer choices of that same sentence. You will choose the answer that has proper grammar and punctuation of the base of sentence that you got. It's about equal to a high school English test. If English is in your first language and you, you want to prepare, read a magazine, read the newspaper, read a book, read anything in English. X-ray test. It's the part that everyone has questions about. It's just one big game of where's Waldo. All you're trying to do is find the object in the image. That's the first objective. And the second thing is testing color vision. If you're colorblind, you probably will struggle with this part. Even if you do pass this part, when you get to the medical exam, you will be given a color vision test. You will still have to pass that test. If you're thinking I'm only red, green, colorblind or whatever, I should be accommodated or things like that. Here's the thing, these x-ray images have different colors on them and the colors sometimes blend together. If you are unable to distinguish between those colors, you become a liability to transportation security. That's why having color vision is a requirement to have this job. For those of you who are sitting there going, oh no, oh my God, I've never seen an x-ray. I've never touched one. What do, what do I do? <laughs> Relax. Nobody is expecting you to be an expert on something they are going to train you how to do anyways, once you get hired. In order to understand how to read an x-ray image, you have to understand Gestalt's theory. Gestalt's theory is saying, in essence, the sum of the parts are viewed as a whole. If you have a degree in psychology, you understand what I'm talking about. If you don't, don't worry. It's super simple. I'm just gonna explain it to you. Here is what Gestalt's theory is trying to tell you. Look at this image. What do you see? A bird, a plane, or Batman? 
Well, your brain is telling you one thing. What if I told you that this is just a simple white background with a bunch of black shapes? That's all this image is. However, what your brain is doing is that. It's taking all those little bits and pieces that are already prearranged and then it's connecting all those dots into what it thinks it is. That's all Gestalt's theory is. It's taken all those tiny pieces and your brain puts it together into something that it understands. Pretty simple, huh? It's a very basic way of saying connect the dots. Let's actually practice Gestalt's theory on an x-ray image so you understand exactly what I'm talking about. Look at this image right down here. There's a dark black image inside of a case of some sort. On the bottom here, you see two prongs sticking out of it or two something sticking out of it. And then here, you see a wire coming out of it. What do you think that could be? Is it possible that the image could be this? Take a look at the image and now look at this. Inside of here is something heavy. These are the two prongs and these are the wires. On an x-ray, your eyes are seeing this, but your brain has to turn it into this. Let's try it again with something else. Let's go back to that image again. Look at the bottom left-hand corner, right below the pliers. You see an object. It's a dark object encased inside of something else. And towards the top, you can tell there's a bunch of other things. What do you think that object could be? Is it possible that the image could be that? Look at the image again. And now look at the phone. What do you think that image and this phone have in common? Right over here is that heavy, dark thing. Towards the top are all the cameras and all the other fancy stuff on a phone. You see a d dark object here and a bunch of stuff here. Probably a phone. Why else could it be a phone? These are also in the bag too. A phone and a charger. Pretty much go together. Kind of like peanut butter and jelly. Those are things I picked up just by looking at different Google images before going in to take the CBT. When I got to the CBT and I started seeing the x-ray images, I started going, oh, that's probably this because it has an outline of a camera. It kind of has camera type stuff in there. That's probably a camera. When you're going through the x-ray images, you have to trust your eyes. Trust what you're looking at. If you think it's a shoe, it's probably a shoe. There's three different ways to read an x-ray image. Number one, you read it going side to side all the way through the entire image. Number two, read it going up and down all the way through the entire image. Three, you split the image into four boxes and then you look at each box individually. I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about. This is an image of a bag. If I told you to find the pliers in the bag, could you find it? Yeah, you could because it stands out at you. However, if you couldn't find it, here's how to do it. If you are going to read the image going from side to side, it looks like this. Just pick a side and go to the other one and then rinse and repeat. 
That's it. And you're doing it through the entire image. Number two, top to bottom. Here's an image going top to bottom. It's very simple. You read the image going top to bottom and you do it through the entire image. The reason why you do it those two ways I just talked about is because it allows you to see the entire image and everything that is in that image. Here are the pliers. Here are all four pictures on one screen. The image on its own, and then the side to side, and then the top to bottom, and then guess what? At the bottom, there's the pliers. If you are getting value from this video, and I am doing an awesome job helping you understand what's going on, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe. Here's another image. If I tell you to find the weapon in this image, could you find it? We already talked about side to side and top to bottom, right? Now you can split th this image into four parts. Box one, box two, box three, and box four. That's right, we can all count. Okay, cool. If I tell you to find the pistol, you go to box one and you start to look for anything that looks like a pistol, or has the outline of a pistol. Box one has something that looks like a pistol. If you follow it, it goes in the box, not box, it goes in the box two. If you continue to follow it, just a little bit goes in the box three. The image can cross quadrants and that's okay. You just follow the outline. There's a knife in that picture. Let's go to box one and then box two, box three and box four. If you Look very closely in box two, there's something that looks like a blade. If you follow it down to box four, you see it's attached to a handle. Guess what? You found the knife. Here's what it looks like. The image on its own, the image split into four pieces, the image with the pistol and the blade with the arrows pointing to them. If you're going through the x-ray image and you don't have any idea what you're looking at, it's okay. Just go back to the image and use the techniques I taught you. If that still doesn't work, it's cool. Close your eyes, count to five, and then look at the image again. If you still don't see it, go with your gut instinct. You have to pick an answer. It's either there or it isn't. Practicing on Google. How did I do it back in 2009? Go to Google, type in baggage x-ray images, hit enter click on images and then start going through those images. All right, people, that's all I got. If you got value from this video, give me a thumbs up and hit subscribe. I have other videos coming, I promise. Until then, peace out.